Hi, this is Dr. Rebecca Wood, and this is our week two lecture. This week we are going to concentrate on making arguments and preventing plagiarism, two very important factors in writing a good research paper. So before we start writing any research papers that make uh, an argument or try to persuade our audience, we want to think about what constitutes an academic argument. And of course, we're going to avoid the type of argument that makes the headlines or ends up on television where there's a loud, rude, scary argument that might result in a bar fight or a road rage incident. We're not going to do any of that. We're going to be more intellectual about our arguments. So in an academic setting, an argument should provide a clear thesis statement that tells the argu pardon me, the audience exactly what we're trying to prove. What is your point? So at some point, if your reader is looking at your paper and trying to decipher what you mean, if they can't tell what your point is, what your main thesis is, then uh, the paper will need some more work. And so also an argument should provide documented evidence from credible sources to support our thesis statement and we should respect the viewpoint of those who may not agree with us. So sometimes people don't agree with us and we can learn from them and they could learn from us as well if we listen and speak respectfully to each other. And so how do we begin an argument? And here I have kind of borrowed um, some very interesting words that started a very important and historic argument. So we want to gain the attention of the audience in the introduction and we could make a dramatic statement about our topic such as exercising regularly can add many healthy years to your life and then that statement must be supported by the rest of the paper. We don't want to go off on a tangent about a whole different topic in anywhere in our paper. One thing we could do to get the audience's attention is to use a dramatic documented quote as the first line or so of your paper. And this allows one of your sources to help you get the audience's attention for you. Of course, then we have to document that wonderful dramatic documented quote very carefully. Uh, one of the most important American arguments, the Declaration of Independence, begins dramatically. Among its first words are these. Quote, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. And then I have documented this in APA style and the U.S. Congress is an organization as author and the, in, the Declaration of Independence was written in 1776. So this is the original publication date. And here's a lovely image from US, the U.S. Congress um, web page that I found and so and here's the original publication date. And how do we begin an argument? What is your point? What are you writing about? Every logical argument has a strong thesis statement and everything in that argument supports the thesis as I said before. Explain how your argument will be presented in the paper. For example, here's a potential argument we could make. Global warming is a dangerous trend that will affect everyone. The three major effects of global warming are rising sea levels, increasingly dangerous weather patterns, and the spread of tropical diseases to additional parts of the planet. So we're thinking about how we would make that argument in our paper. And so we're going to think about how we would um, pre-write that paper, brainstorm ideas, mind map our ideas, put them on probably real paper, we could maybe try it on the computer, outlining and preliminary research. And then document all your material from sources carefully as, you're, as you draft. I repeat this a lot, um, but I don't, I don't think that we can stress it enough. Documenting after the fact is 10 times harder, at least. Uh, sometimes if you can't figure out where you got something for your paper and you don't know what what source it's from or what page it was on, you have to just take out that section and it can cost you a lot of material, um, but not documenting it after the fact would be even more dangerous. We don't want to be guilty of unintentional or intentional plagiarism.
And here's a not so secret writing tip. The best introductions are rewritten or written last. And so don't expect to have this wonderful sparkling introduction uh, that will start off your paper. Don't spend all your time on that introduction. Just write a preliminary introduction and rewrite it once the paper is finished so that it matches what you've actually done in the paper. And so think about it. Um, you might hear me say this again. This is something I'm very fond of um, using as a metaphor for writing. And that is that um, we need to know where we're starting and where we're ending. And then we can write the middle of the paper. So we're, let's just think about how we're on our little road map of the United States here and we're going to go from St. Louis somewhere here and we're going to go to Disney World now we aren't going to get to Disney World unless we know where we're starting and where we're ending and so we want to wrap up all the major ideas in our paper and then think about how you can get from that that pardon me the introduction to the conclusion in a logical manner now there are a couple of opposing viewpoints about whether we should use opposing viewpoints in our papers. So some people believe that an argument is not an argument unless you bring up the opposing viewpoints. I don't really agree with that. So since you're writing papers for this class, you can leave out the opposing viewpoints unless you really feel compelled to put them in. Uh, think of writing an argument like when an attorney is making a case in court. An effective attorney is not going to stop and make the opposing counsel's case for them. The prosecutor is not going to help the defense any more than they have to, and the defense is not going to help the prosecutor any more than they have to. So um, you can just make an argument on one side for this class, and that's fine. Um, now here's the other viewpoint on this. You could respectfully bring up opposing viewpoints in your argument. However, if you do this, please do not let the opposing viewpoints take over the paper. I have read several papers in which the, um, oppos the opposing viewpoint was so much better than the uh, main viewpoint in the paper that it really pretty much blew the paper. To smithereens so please watch out for that if you do bring up the opposing viewpoints show why those op opposing viewpoints are not as valid as your main argument so preventing plagiarism we can be our own plagiarism police and yes this image here is a picture I took which is why it's not cited or attributed to a source and I, I am using a very cliched image you know the police department plagiarism police just to make it vivid because we do want to make sure that we are documenting our material in our papers um, and then in a slide presentation for work or um, school we may be able to just attribute which website they came from or what source they're from clip art we don't have to document that we also do not have to um, document photographs that we took for ourselves although if we're a little concerned we might want to mention that this is a picture I took a police headquarters to go along with my plagiarism police imagery all right, so getting more serious again, thinking about preventing plagiarism through constant awareness. Whatever it is, if you found it in your sources, please document it as you insert it, copy it, or type it into your paper. Please document everything from your sources, including direct quotes, paraphrases, summarizations, and brand new ideas from your research. Whether you have been writing documented research papers for years or have just begun, you'll need a good handbook. And fortunately, our Little Seagull Handbook is very good. And also, we can refer to the Purdue OWL website from wherever we are. And the Purdue OWL is being revised, so it will look very different now than it did before. And you don't have to memorize all of the possible variations on in-text citations or references listing. Just look them up when you need to do so. Don't clog up your brain with all that stuff. Uh, when you're using a direct quote, it's not your words. Um, you're copying it from the source and these, sor these quotations must be enclosed in quote marks and then an APA in-text citation. So if I find myself on my computer copying this text and then I put it in my paper, then I need to document and this is my 
author's name. This is the year of publication and there were no actual page numbers since this was an online source so I left the page numbers off. So I've documented the quote from this text online. Summaries are paraphrases. When we translate a sentence in a source into our own words and we're not just changing a verb tense or two or making a word plural that wasn't plural, uh, we need to change it more into our own language. It's called a paraphrase. We paraphrase to make sure that our voice does not get lost in our paper, to make the passage easier for our audience to understand, and to avoid using too many direct quotes in a paper. And this is what a documented paraphrase would look like, and this is based on the source in the previous slide. In our busy world, many people turn coffee shops into their office space. Notice that it's still cited because I still got this from a source. And that's what you should do with your documentation as well. And so summarizing a longer passage into a shorter one without using the source's exact words or word order would also call for an in-text citation. And this is a reference list of the sources that I used in this paper and so we want to keep the handbook and the owl handy I had to look up these formats I had to see that well the US Congress wrote the Declaration of Independence this was kind of a tricky one and it was retrieved from the uh, US government archives and then I had a map of the United States that I retrieved from this site Notice how I have indented the second and third and fourth lines, if we had them, of our sources. And our sources are in alphabetical order on the references page. So this is an example of what a references page would look like, even though it's in, uh, on a, a PowerPoint presentation. I hope you all have a great week, and I'm looking forward to reading your paper one. Thank you. Bye-bye.